Dear viewers, welcome to today's episode of Visit. I brought spring into this wonderful little studio. And I am looking forward to this time with you. And at this point, I would like to thank you again for the numerous letters from your side to Visit at qs24.tv. Of course, that always gives a wonderful basis for designing these programmes. And thank you very much for your feedback. It also reaches me. And I can give you something that might make you more aware of what your life is about. Broadens your mind, which helps you to make decisions, even if they're good or not. But you calm down and you know what your heart simply needs. That's actually the best motor in us or what I think you can feel best, where your own path is going. That's what's important. That is why there is never any advice from the medical side that applies for everyone. That means everyone has to take for themselves again and again what is important to them. And I want to go straight to the first case. It is a case documentation by Maria. Thank you very much, Maria, for your inquiry. And it was so kind. You wrote, Unfortunately, I stumbled upon this visit program quite late and always enjoy listening to current advice and recommendations. It's never too late, dear Maria, to change something in life. There is nothing in life that lasts forever. This means life itself changes with each passing day and with it we can adapt ourselves and our bodies on this path and sometimes make it more stable for this through a whole lot of things. And at the moment, of course, a pretty strong wind is blowing against us. But you write that until two years ago, you felt in top shape. And that's a good feeling. And it's also a good measure of one's own health. And anyway, it is also important to maybe get to a clinic and look at things. If my tolerance is still strong enough, if my metabolism is still in balance, how much do we not really know? And how much do we just not feel? So that was good. But in that case, it wasn't good. So you write, because suddenly you were a sick woman. And you write that examinations were now being carried out and suddenly you had some diagnoses. And maybe, dear viewers, let's fade in. I've compiled that for you. The first is a so-called postmenopausal. So after the hormonal cycle, when menstruation subsides, developing osteoporosis. The other is left-sided glaucoma, an eye that has increased intraocular pressure. Then a latent hypothyroidism, so latently always conspicuous, but perhaps clinically far from being associated with symptoms. And a dyslipidemia, that is a change in the cholesterol or fat metabolism in general, that then led you starting to take statins, and these statins, the cholesterol-lowering drugs, are one of the best-selling drugs in the world today. And all of you, I think, this very interested audience of these shows know that these statins are, of course, associated with a very large side effect. You also experience this side effect, you write, because immediately after using these statins, you experienced such strong joint pain that you gave it up immediately. And that was a good thing because, of course, those statins didn't just cause joint pain, but also diarrhea again and again. And that's probably true. What is 
does also for social contacts and for what you do to yourself, it is not a good reaction. And then it is also not a good decision. And you drop that, but you still have an intolerance today. And you write that on beans and green salad. You can't at all understand these are really high quality foods, but your tolerance to these things has since gone. Statins have one major side effect. We need Q10 for our intracellular energy metabolism. We have already learned a lot about Q10. This means that these energy deficits at the cellular level, which then take place, of course, mean on a small scale that the cell is no longer capable of producing its own energy, but also on the large side that the organ, which consists of these cells, is also reduced in its functional performance. That means also inflammation of a muscular nature. Joint pain caused by statins can be explained in this way. The Q10 itself is in a very important enzyme complex, one sprigs of respiratory chains within the mitochondria of these energy power plants because they have to be able to convert the food energy, so what we eat through high quality nutrition, into cellular energy. And statins have an intracellular point of attack right here to then block this Q10 meta metabolism and that is, of course, reflected in the fact that a performance breaks away on many levels. By the way, my experience, clinical experience over these many, many years, is that especially people who take statins, on the one hand, say it is very important because cholesterol is an atherosclerosis factor and so on, which has been disproved for more than 25 years. But the heart has a high energy output potential. The heart has so much more mitochondria per cardiac cell than the normal cell. Since tumour is a mitochondrial energy deficiency, we hardly ever see tumour diseases in the heart. For 20 years, I have asked myself why there is actually no cancer of the heart. And in this energy metabolism from statins in the long term, I am now talking about long term effects. It is not shown by a pain in the heart. I see, I see that with a really big responsibility, not prescribing statins to people at all. I have not prescribed them in these many, many, many years. In exceptional cases with a family, hyperlipidemia, but then of course with high Q10 protection. However, people did not go through life with utopian cholesterol levels. We'll get to that in a moment. Why is such a cholesterol metabolism then presented as if cholesterol is too high and we need to lower it? What are the reasons behind this? I thought that was very important at first and I also thought it was very nice that you acted so responsibly and of course stopped taking the statins. And that was a right decision. The other thing is that I'm allowed to read but then because of this elevated cholesterol you have been referred to a vascular surgeon. That was your greatest wish. And the vascular surgeon were now doing an ultrasound of the carotid. The carotid is the main artery leading to the heart. And the main artery, the aorta, so the big, the largest artery that comes out of the heart. And the carotid arteries are being evaluated for their flow now. And the specialist, the cardiological colleague, assured this patient it's tip-top. Tip-top is a very nice expression here in Switzerland. And when someone says tip-top, it's tip-top. 
but tip-top means at the moment it is so well permeable over a large area that as a statement in this regard means that the blood circulation is in order. What is incomprehensible is that both the specialist and the GP thought you should take statins anyway. Blood circulation, so whether a cell is well supplied with oxygen, whether a cell thus realises its own high energy metabolism, does not depend on how well my main artery and my carotid artery are supplied with blood, but how open and how well supplied with blood is the microcapillary flow area and you can't tell that with a Doppler test. That's why we do it in the clinic, for example, with dart field microscopy examinations. There we see to what extent the erythrocytes, the red blood cells, have an optimal membrane tension because blood flow is based in its 100% justification to supply the cell with oxygen so that the red blood cell get through the smallest capillaries. They must pass the smallest capillaries. That is, the capillary has only the diameter for one red blood cell. That means they all have to line up a bit one after the other. It doesn't matter if the blood clots it doesn't matter if the vessel has an 85% narrowing. It doesn't matter. It has to. The decision is made at the cellular level. And I'm incredibly happy for you because the atherosclerosis problem is substantially reduced here. But it is only a limited statement. Your circulation is fine. To think about it means to look deeper. Despite the recommendation, you actually stop taking the statins, which I found very valuable. And you finally told us that you have a glaucoma. The glaucoma is treated. You get injections in the eye every month. And you also get eye drops in the eye. Nevertheless, with a glaucoma, with increased eye pressure, Please keep in mind that the eye regeneration is always dependent on an intact liver metabolism can regenerate always through optimal microcirculation and that the aqueous humor, which of course has to have a really optimal throw, flow through the eye, can be influenced here for many reasons in the metabol metabolic processes. The drops you take, of course, give the tear ducts the opportunity to come into a relaxed situation. But at the end of the day, these are eye drops. Of course, if you no longer take them, they do not change anything about the causal problem. You then write, or we see that from the diagnosis, you gave me lab values and I had a look at them. That's a value that was taken in 2021. That was the parathyroid hormone and the parathyroid hormone has a value here of 70.6. This hormone is produced by the parathyroid. And it has a job in our body. And next to it are vitamin D values. Vitamin D measured in October 2020 was 53 nanomoles. And the control value a year later was 91 nanomoles. You now see that the normal range for vitamin D is 100 to 175. And I really want that every person has a sufficient optimal and high vitamin D level. 
there are too many high quality immune functions, metabolic functions, calcium absorption, bone regeneration that are no longer possible in the same way when vitamin D is down. You shouldn't get tired of this. And when we doctors are tired and when we doctors don't do it, automatically then please do me a favour and measure your vitamin D levels. When I ask how high is your vitamin D, everyone I answer, I'm supplementing. And this is not enough for me because I have to be able to decide whether what you take is sufficient. And the vitamin D already has a very low value in 2020. And then in October 2021, which means through substitution, but maybe also, of course, through the summer and the exposure to the sun, brought up vitamin D a bit again. But that would never be enough for a winter. Now come three, four months with little light exposure. And whenever vitamin D is naturally low, then it means that the calcium cannot be absorbed through the intestines. But what does the body do when it needs calcium? And the decisive factor, which of course constantly controls this in a fine-tuned manner, is the blood. And it is challenged by the parathyroid hormone that the bones have to be ready now because the body cannot do without calcium. And the priorities, which and where calcium now must be available, are not up to you. Our body decides that on its own. And now you're taking vitamin D, there's no question about it. And maybe I can ask you to look at the next slide. That's when you see that you're taking a vitamin D supplement. This is the vitamin D. No, this slide, please wait. It's correct. I didn't show you this slide, but you take vitamin D eight drops and those eight drops of vitamin D means one drop is 100 international units. Those 100 international units at eight drops are 800 international units. You take the calcium magon D340. There are 1,000 milligrams of calcium in it and 800 units of vitamin D as well. That means you take 800 plus 800, 1,600 units of vitamin D every day. And I have to tell you, that's nothing to write home about. And I have to tell you, that's nothing to write home about. And now you understand that the parathyroid hormone has to increase because that parathyroid hormone is produced in the parathyroid and is only brought out when the body registers a calcium deficiency. So you have to react to this elevated parathyroid hormone. Because if you don't respond to it, you're freeing up the bone for backup storage. And it constantly compensates for what is needed in the body, in the organism, by providing it in the bones. It's not that easy sometimes, but in that case here, please, you have to do something. Now you have to react. And for the next three months, I ask you, I ask you to take 6,000 international units of vitamin D daily, up to 10,000 twice a week. That would take an incredibly long time to get to you to a good vitamin D level. You, as part of this increased substitution, you can have your vitamin D levels checked in two months. You could also have the parathyroid hormone value measured again so that you can see that it goes down again because the parathyroid has the feeling that everything is fine now it is back in balance and on the other hand please add the vitamin d1 2 again then we know namely whether the inactive vitamin d250h is converted into active vitamin d 
I'll summarise again. If vitamin D is low because we have too little sun exposure, and that is a process that takes years and affects everyone, this has to do with the position of the sun. This is related to the exposure times. People used to be outdoors for eight hours. The body needs this optimal vitamin D for hundreds of thousands of immune reactions. But I'm concentrating on osteoporosis here, the slow descaling, which according to your examination is not that bad at all. You're not at risk of fracture or anything, but this vitamin D is so important now. And if the vitamin D is too low, how do you think the body reacts? What does it need to produce this vital hormone? It needs vitamin D. Well, what is that? It needs cholesterol. Well, what is that? To block the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver and continue to accompany it in the breakdown process. That was incredibly great of you to say, no, I don't like that. And the body really has the right to say, I don't want that. And it shows you that it is even more overwhelmed by it. If vitamin D can get back to normal and you fill that up now, you'll see that automatically cholesterol will go down quietly because the body is far smarter than us. It will not make any effort to provide more cholesterol unless there are perhaps hormonal deficiencies at other levels. In the meantime, it needs more for his cell membranes. Everywhere we need high quality cholesterol. But you can still compensate for that by eating an egg for breakfast every day. That is, provide sufficient good synthesis. That's one thing. The other thing is, of course, that you don't have to discipline yourself a bit in that direction. Well, that isn't actually the right kind, but if vitamin D is up, then make sure you're getting enough calcium as well. I myself do not use this calcium because it is inorganic calcium in the form of an effervescent tablet. I tell people just to eat sesame every day or this pecorino, that's a sheep's cheese, kale, spinach, almonds, all of that. I wrote that down for you. It's also in walnuts, some good yogurt. And then these are things that are in the highest form on a nutritional level. There's nothing above that. But the other thing which is very important is that I read from the documents you sent me, that the thyroid has latent hypothyroidism, that is, it has no clinical findings yet. A thyroid hypofunction is therefore something like tomorrow is another day. The voice is deep, the metabolism is slow, people gain weight, don't know it. No, latent hypothyroidism can become apparent. If the TSH value and your TSH value from October 2021, which you sent to me, was 4.77. That means the hormone that attacks the thyroid in terms of to produce thyroid hormones in the pituitary gland it's banging away and the normal value is 0 0.27 to 4.2. So if this TSH alone is over 2, 2.5, 3, then the pituitary gland works with signals to the thyroid gland. You have to produce more. Hypothyroidism, and that is already a latent tendency to hypo. Hypothyroidism is now to be further diagnosed because now you have to look at how many hormones in the blood are still available to you and you know what we notice when someone finds out that they have an underactive thyroid their cholesterol rises because their metabolism is slowed that means it's also a cofactor 
for cholesterolemia, it is called, that the cholesterol is elevated. So here you have to check thyroid hormones. It's called T3, T4, T3 reserve. And maybe the cofactors too. Although thyroid hormones are produced in the thyroid gland, they do not act on the thyroid, they work on the cell. And now I'm coming to the end because I think you've received many, many good tips. Follow your good body feeling. And finally, I would like to congratulate you very much because the best osteoporosis prophylaxis and also therapy for osteoporosis in addition to providing the body with everything, of course, is the movement. The osteoblasts and the osteoclasts and the bone cells are always build and break down regularly. And when it comes to osteoporosis, dismantling is faster than building. You avoid that because you're active and because you say, I move. And you ask me if it's good to buy a trampoline. That's super good. And now I'll tell you, I love this timer. When you set it, the red fan goes slowly and you set it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day and simply have your favourite music with it and you will see how quickly these 20 or 30 minutes go. But also with how much joy you do it and how you regain health bit by bit on all levels and for sure... Please don't believe things at all that you can't move an osteoporosis, which you may have noticed as a tendency back in the direction that you say, I'm getting my health stability back. With this in mind, dear Maria, thank you very much for your detailed documentation, also for the findings that you sent me. And I hope that we have also made one or the other a little more sensitive. You know we have to understand life today and we don't have to push lab values down. We need to understand what they are telling us. The body often has the opportunity to give us signals via these laboratory values. And above all, we must finally, finally silence this storm. This storm, this external noise and focus on what life really needs. The body pulls its grip on us, sometimes through illness, but we can relax it. Simply by understanding it and by taking matters into our own hands. And because we might also need people who can help us a little bit. And on that note, have a wonderful week everyone. Enjoy spring with me and I'm looking forward to the next episode of Visit. And I may remind you, whenever you have questions or just want a second opinion, send it to me at visit at qs24.tv. Thank you very much and goodbye.